How quickly can you tell um, which of the images below is a rotation of the image above? And <laughs> so if you had coffee just before instead of beer, would you be faster? Or if you slept a bit more? That's right. You're pretty good. If you slept a bit more last night or were standing up right Mike. now? Mike. Mike. Keep Mike back. So I'd like to, to um, talk about a way to answer those questions. And this is a project called Quantified Mind, alluding to this wonderful collaboration we're all part of. My name is Yoni. I'm at Stanford and Google Research. That's why I don't have a name tag. Um, I do artificial intelligence, machine learning, Bayesian modeling, data analysis, and cognitive psychology, studying, thinking qualitatively, and now finally quantitatively. So I'm a meta-optimizer, and I believe in building a core set of skills that are widely applicable across multiple domains, like a good memory, efficient reading, sustained focus over time. And the question is, so how do you optimize a brain? And we know of many things that actually affect our cognitive performance, but it's really hard to optimize those things. So we don't know really how to do the amounts, the timings, the interactions, and some things are frankly so subtle or individual that we don't even know if they have any effect at all. So I think we need the scientific method, or in this circles, the quantified self methods. Um, try different things and see what works, but you need to measure the outcome. And the question is, how do you measure a brain? So there's a whole field called psychometrics, which is concerned with answering this question. Um, but there's a critical difference between their aim and ours, and that is that they are concerned with measuring a person once and comparing them against the general population and other people. And we actually want to measure the same person many times under different conditions. And so this difference, I claim, is critical, and we can't just use their tests anyway and ignore it, because their tests are often long, unrepeatable, they require a person, a psychologist, to administer and to score sometimes, and they typically measure because of fixed forms at the population mean instead of at your personal level, which gives you the most information. So this is why I built Quantified Mind, um, which is a website where everyone can track their own cognitive performance under different conditions through tests which are friends, um, fun, repeat repeatable, effective, dynamic, and short. Um, so I'm going to describe one quick example of like a, a really simple experiment I've done on myself, and now we're actually running a lot more experiments on groups and other people. So I've been a long-term proponent of intermittent <coughs> fasting, and I often felt that I am simply way more awesome when I'm fasted, cognitively anyway. And so I set out to prove that quantitatively and to show everyone that that's true. So I set up a simple experimental protocol where every day at 2 p.m. I would take 15 minutes of my own tests, after either consuming no food at all, or a small meal, or a large meal, and eventually throwing myself at the altar of science, I added the monster meal. <laughs> this is not fun, believe me. Um, so my test included reaction time, um, working memory, executive function, motor function, and visual information processing. And to analyze the results, I used the website itself through our data mining feature. Um, so all the graphs I'm going to show you are generated through the site itself. And I'm only going to discuss the general conclusions, and we can go happily into the details later if you're interested. So the first thing I notice is that my reaction times are, in fact, significantly slower when I'm fasted, completely opposite to what I expected to see. And even having a monster meal, which totally knocked me out, really, um, <coughs> only brought me back as much as the, the fasted baseline. So I asked, well, am I more precise, or am I um, just slower, am I more precise? So it turns out that it's true. I do make more mistakes um, in the small meal and big meal conditions, but not that many more. I developed this corrected reaction time measure, taking into account both speed and accuracy. It was still way worse when fasted. So next, I look at the executive function. So the color word test um, asks you to respond either to the word or the color it's written in, and people are notoriously slower when they disagree. This it's is the one-known Stroop effect. It's a good test. Um, thank you. <laughs> so. On average, my, my reaction times were again slower when fasting, but the Stroop effect was equally big under all conditions, this suggesting that actually inhibition is not affected by fasting very strongly. So a similar result in the sorting task, um, where you need to respond to the stimuli along one of three possible dimensions, and the rule changes every several trials, so it's a test of context switching. So again, slower on average, but the context switching response is actually kind of the same under conditions. <coughs> So a test of visual information processing and a test of motor function actually do show a significant uh, advantage to eating, both just consistently better. A test of attention um, on the lower right shows a similar result. However, interestingly, 
um, three tests which are more complex and all importantly involve working memory uh, more than the others show no significant effect or maybe just a slight benefit. So there is a high dimensional thing going on here. So that was interesting. Um, so what have I learned from all this? So there is a simple lesson, which is, of course, that food is energy, but food coma is not energy. Um, but there is a more interesting lesson here, and that is that I cannot rely on my perception. My perception is distorted. I was totally sure that I am simply better when I'm fasting. That's how I felt. But it turned out that the numbers are different. <coughs> so I learned that whenever I feel something like that, I should actually measure it and, and ask the question um, and rely less on subjective experience. And then there's a the question of what to do about it, right? I've learned all this much. So of course, there's again the trivial thing of, so I shouldn't um, be so afraid of having lunch anymore for losing my awesomeness. Uh, so I do have lunch quite often these days. But the more interesting thing, I think, is that I actually now plan activities around my mental state. So if I have this tedious, long programming task, I would prefer to do it faster. I can sit down for longer. I don't really feel the need to run around and, and do stuff that's more challenging. But you know, when I need to be a peak performance, or if I want to do some physical activity, I'd probably prefer to eat something before. Uh, and that was a big change for me. So that was a simple example of, of uh, an experiment I've done. We're now running a lot more uh, trials on things like butter and the other US favorites. Um, and so why is Quantified Mind a useful tool for doing these things? So it's based on a vast amount of previous existing literature. Um, it makes the whole statistics part easy by allowing you to do it through the site itself. All the data is stored, allowing us to ask future questions that we didn't anticipate while collecting the data. The tests are all dynamic and short and hopefully fun. At least I enjoy them, and people have testified that they do as well. And they cover a wide variety of cognitive skills, giving us a multi-dimensional picture. So finally, I owe a big thanks to Nick Winter, who is not just an amazing person, but also without whom this project would probably still be a pretty lame prototype on my computer that even I don't bother using. Um, and thank you all for your time and attention, and I hope you visit us in 25 your months. So, questions? So, I, I have a question about the uh, ecological measures versus the psychometric style or the new version measures that you use. I'm wondering if maybe your perception that you're actually better when you're fasted would be borne out if you had actual measures of, say, if your programmer, the amount of code you outputted, or bug fixes, and so forth. Because I, I tend to think that those um, artificial tasks might not be capturing what you're saying. Yeah, so th this is a question of validity, right? Yeah, ecological validity, yeah. Yeah, so it is definitely true that it would be best for any specific activity you want to get better at to measure simply how much better you get at this activity. And uh, one of the things I want to do is actually use the vast amounts of data we have here at Google at people writing code um, to do this kind of thing. But as I mentioned before, I do believe that for meta-optimization, where you just try to build some general skills, you might as well measure those skills. And all of those constructs have been validated thoroughly in academia. Um, so it's a question of a trade-off. I mean, certainly for programmers, it's very interesting to look at lines of code written. And I'm not sure that this gives you a great measure of productivity directly. Uh, and I'm always interested in adding more tests that test specific things. And there's a great value in, in using measures that don't actually require you to stop what you're doing and do tests. Uh, but at least as far as we know from academic studies, these things are sort of as validated as as I hoped uh, to get. How long were you fasting for when you were fasting? Probably on average 21 hours. 21 hours? And then you performed your test? Yeah. OK. Did, did you happen to keep track of what you ate? Yeah. So it tends to be fairly regular. Um, I didn't track exactly, but I did estimate calories, since from my um, old days, I, I still can't uh, seem to lose that skill. And 
the small meal falls into sort of the 500 calorie range, large meal would be about 1,000, and monster about 2,000. If you can believe I can do that. <coughs> Have you have built-in ability to enter your own conditions or up upload your own data? To yes. Your own upload your own data. I'm not sure from where that would like, be. Uh, you know, but like Fitbit or something like that. Activity. Oh, as conditions. Yeah. No. So we allow. Okay. So we do allow you to enter <coughs> your own conditions, and we also allow you to export your data so you can combine that in your own tools with other things. Upload would be an interesting feature to consider. Okay. Um, so 21 hours, um, are there feelings that you've had about, obviously you've done a lot of fasting, I mean that's, that's the implication anyway, so is there a feeling you get after 21 hours as opposed to 15 as opposed to 45, I'm just, you know, why 21 and what's that range of experience? Right, so one, why 21 is uh, sort of a, a non not rigorous optimization of trying to get all the eating done in sort of a single meal, but not really wanting to have this huge meal in one sitting, so it ends up being like sort of a combination of binging and grazing or whatever have you. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of fasting, and there is a difference in the feeling. There's definitely some point, well, it's confounded with circadian rhythms, right? So that, that's a big problem always, which is why it's super important to do these things at the same time of day, because uh, as Jeremy said, time of day is a big thing. Um, there is a little dip at some point, maybe around the 15, 17 hours, and then it becomes just fine, or at least so it feels, and apparently it isn't. Um, I, I think people have studied these things before, but there is definitely a factor which, after you're getting used to eating one meal a day, for several months, things change. I mean, you, you feel hunger differently, your whole system reacts circadian, uh, differently circadian-wise. So yeah, I was, um, I'm sure a lot of people here, since you're new, don't know about the famous butter-mind experiment, but uh, assuming you do, I was just wondering how your tools for measuring uh, cognitive performance compare to the one that they used in butter-mind, and you know, how valid you think the butter-mind uh, measurements were. So there's a, a problem with doing things like um, mental arithmetic, which is that it tests practice in the first runs, and after that it actually te tests something like caching to judo pro operations. And we're actually trying to cover a wide variety of skills, and we're using all uh, validated academic tools, but I would really love to do to redo Buttermind if people want to volunteer. And actually we have a one-person trial that already has over 50 results, um, 50 separate days of yes butter, no butter. And that result is actually quite surprising. What um, is it? It's a significant slowing down under the butter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Ari, maybe we have to run butter mine again. And, <laughs> and actually it's a more significant effect than lactose. Um, or, or gluten, which both had also negative results. Oh, wow. Jeremy? Um, so I, I guess I find there's a lot of variance from day to day in my performance which can't be explained by, by external factors that I've recorded. Um, I mean, so my question twofold. One is, do you find that as well? And do you find that on those days where you have done, for whatever reason, better than usual, that the rest of your day after that kind of looks good, that you're going to zip along and have a good day? So that seems to sort of go away when you control for one of the default predictors we put in there, which is mood and, and energy, um, which just describes this mysterious axis of how things are going well for you in general. It definitely does exist, but I, I guess our goal is to try to optimize what we can by relating things to what we do realize and just sort of average out the rest of the variance, and it would be great if, you, if we could attribute that to something real. Tell me a little bit about the, the website. What, what's your goal with the website? Do you want like a gazillion people coming there, trying everything they can imagine, or uh, tell me where you want to go with that? Yeah, well, thanks for asking that. I'm really glad um, you did. So I want, on the one hand, um, 
just a lot of self self experimentation um, and people just filling out their conditions and learning things and sharing them with other people but also it would be really great if we use a <coughs> power in numbers and do group studies on several things that are sort of myths in, in this community. And I'm not saying if butter works or not, but it would be really good to validate such things as the, the really awesome butter mine experiment um, did. And maybe try to figure out why there is individual variation in that. So I actually am about to submit a huge IRB protocol trying to be an umbrella for all quantified, all safe quantified self-interventions. Uh, and I want to do this academically, um, but with a big help from the quantified self-community, and just start a new science of optimizing cognitive performance. And it would be really great if people were enthusiastic and were willing to spend the time to help with this. Okay. So just to remind people, um, Yoni's website that is, is quantified-mind.com. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.